Hi booktube, Lynette here and I'm coming at you now with my to be read pile for March. Again as in February I've got quite a big TBR pile. I'm probably not going to finish all of them, it's not my intent to finish all of them but it's my intent to finish as many of them as possible. So I'm still taking part in two read-alongs this year. The first read-along is the in-death read-along which is to read one book a month of the In Death series by J.D. Robb. For March the book that I need to read is the third book in the series and that is Immortal In Death and it, again it follows Eve Dallas who is a homicide detective in a futuristic New York and her um, beau fiance I can't remember how it ended it was a few weeks ago now that I read the second one um, Rourke and Eve is again going to be investigating a series of murders and obviously how this impacts on her and Rourke and their romantic life. The second readathon that I'm doing this year is the Romanceopoly challenge and for this challenge um, I'm playing Monopoly but with romance books and there's a whole uh, board that you're taking part in and I'm going around the board and I'm working on the moon pack they have two packs this year to give you, you different sort of ideas and I chose to follow um, actually no I didn't choose the moon pack I chose the sun pack uh, so I've got four books that I want to read in March for the Romanceopoly the first one is to read the seasonal book which has to be read by the 20th of March and that is to read a book that either has blue, white or silver on the cover or has a wintry word in the title so cold, ice, winter, snow, anything like that. I have actually chosen to um, go with the word in the title and I have chosen to read Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Claypass. I'm sorry I don't really know what these I haven't looked into what the romance books are about so um, if you're interested intrigued by the covers you'll have to go and have a look I'll try and leave a link to them down below so you can investigate for yourself uh, then the next book that I, next square that I've landed on um, because I've done my roles is uh, I landed on best friends um, house and that is to read uh, a best friends sibling um, romance novel and for this one I have chosen Southern Player by Jessica Peterson. Um, again haven't really looked at what it's about uh, but I think it's set in America's South um, and obviously a, a man who has a thing for his best friend's younger sister. The next role that I did landed on Fang Alley which is to read a paranormal romance where the shifter um, or vampire is the main hero or heroine. For this book I've chosen to read The Thief by J.R. Ward. This is um, one of the latest books in her Black Dagger Brotherhood series. Uh, it's the next one in the series for me to read. Um, I have gotten a bit behind I'm about a couple of years behind with releases now um, but I am struggling to continue the series it's uh, the, the last couple of books weren't really up to the same standard um, but some people are saying that these later books are getting back to how the series was at the beginning and is getting back to the crux of the story so I'm looking forward to trying to move forward with this series again the final square that I landed on was Action Avenue and this is to read an urban fantasy with a kick-ass hero heroine on the cover and I've chosen Blade Song by JC Daniels. Again the cover intrigued me, haven't really looked at what it's about um, but paranormal so there'll be magic, vampires, ghosts, werewolves, all sorts of things and obviously a romance at the heart of it. So those are my four picks for Romanceopoly. Then we get into uh, the books that I want to continue this month. Um, I did actually end February without having finished all the books that I'd started. Um, but one of the books that I had started and not yet finished was Harry Potter 
and the Half-Blood Prince. This is continuing my Harry Potter reread, uh, which I started in January and uh, tried to continue in February, but I didn't quite get to this one. Um, I got quite a way through it. I um, Yeah, so I've got that much left to go. Uh, and we all know what Harry Potter's about. Uh, obviously, Harry's finding out some things about himself. He's he's not quite so likeable in this one, um, but also all the hormones of a 15, 16 year old boy are coming into play. And yeah, it, it, I just I love these books anyway. So this is just a real nostalgic read. I'm probably going to finish this quite early in March. So um, it will probably come up quite quickly as finished on Goodreads. Um, so yes, that's a, that's one that I'm itching to, to finish right now. I also want to continue my classic. I did choose a classic last month to start and I started out with David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. This is about, we follow his life from birth to... Uh, being a young man, a married man, with a, starting his own family. Uh, I read it before. I read it about 30 years ago when I was a child. Um, but again, it's one of those ones that I didn't really probably take that much notice of and didn't know very much about. Um, but it's a classic. It's one that's been sat on my e-reader for quite a few years now. So I'm going to pick up with those um, and hopefully make a bit of a dent in it. I've only read about 50 or so pages so far. So hopefully I can make more of a dent in that this month. The next book I want to continue is um, another series that I started, uh, started last year. Um, and again, it's another book that I started, partially started in February. Um, but again, I've only read 50 or so pages. I haven't read that much of it. The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. This is book two of his Wheel of Time series following uh, Rand and Matt and all the other Emmonsfielders who ran from Emmonsfield in the first book and are finding out that they have magic um, or magic for this world uh, and that one of them is potentially um, a, a, a mythical character who has been reborn and it could mean terrible things for the remainder of the world. Um, like I say, I haven't got that far into it. I think I'm only, yep. So that's how far I am into it. That's how much I've got to go. I don't think I'm going to finish this this month. I think it's going to be one that I pick up as and when I feel like it. So I'm probably not going to actually read a huge amount of this this month. If I can get another 50 to 100 pages read, then I will actually consider that um done for the month then i have some books that i want to um start in this month um the first one of those these these next two are library books um and the first one is actually to finish a duology that i started in february and i want to read muse of nightmares by laney taylor this continues the story that was started in strange the dreamer Strange the Dreamer is about a librarian called Laszlo Strange who, from a small boy, has been obsessed with a city that is only known as Weep. Um, it's a city that uh, people used to come from, but you couldn't go to them. And 200 years previous to Strange the Dreamer, they stopped coming. And then 15 years um, before the story picks up Laszlo as an adult, the actual name of the city is wiped from everybody's memories and it becomes known as Weep, or as Laszlo likes to call it, the Unseen City. Uh, that story is all about how Laszlo dearly wants to visit the city and finally an opportunity comes and he takes it and he travels to Weep and it follows on the story from there. Laszlo finds some things out about himself and about the world um, and the this book picks up straight from where uh, Strange Dreamer left off, um, which was a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, wasn't too much of a cliffhanger, but it was enough to actually make me think, oh, I need to read The Muse of Nightwares. So I actually already had this on hold from the library. 
Um, so I'd already been to pick it up just before I finished the range, the dreamer. And I've got it ready to go. Uh, if I don't finish Harry Potter first in March, then I would definitely be picking up Muse of Nightmares regardless, because I really want to get this read this month. I also have another library book. Um, and again, I probably want to try and read this by the end of the month, or at least get it started by the end, um, end of this month, because I have to return it to the library mid-month-ish. Um, I can renew it as long as there are no holes in it on it um, but so I'd want to read it quite quickly just to make sure and that is Finders Keepers by Stephen King. When I was in my teens I absolutely loved Stephen King. I still do. I've reread some of the books I read as a teen um, in the last few years and absolutely loved him. I still love his writing. He has the power to scare me silly um, and I liked all versions because everybody puts him in as a horror writer um, but he's actually very good at thriller and suspense as well. This is more of the on the thriller suspense side of it um, and a little bit of magical realism I think might be in there. Um, it's the first of a series of three that he wrote uh, about a private detective Bill Hodges. Uh, so it's about a theft that happened in the 70s and then how uh, in modern day people want to find the items that were stolen and Bill Hodges has to uh, figure that out. Um, he's a retired detective, he's become a private detective uh, and it's all about that. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Haven't read Stephen King for about 12 months now and I really want to get back into his writing again because I did thoroughly enjoy it as a teen. Finally, the next book I want to make a dent in is my books that I need to clear off of my books that I've started but not finished uh, list. And the first one of those that's been chosen is the A Song of Ice and Fire series because I have them as a bind up of five on my Kindle. Uh, I've read A Game of Thrones. I read that last year and I started A Clash of Kings and got as far as the prologue and put it down and never went any further. Um, I'd hit a pretty big reading slump at that point and I don't think A Clash of Kings was actually helping. I've tried to write it, read it twice before as an ebook, um, as an audiobook rather, uh, but I never really got on with it. Um, however, I'm going to attempt it as an audiobook again. I am going on a reading retreat in the middle of the month. I'm driving from my home in Somerset up to a bed and breakfast in Yorkshire. The reading retreat is being run by another booktuber called Jess McGlynn. And I'll try and link her channel down below as well for you. Uh, but she has um, an Instagram page called Sparrow Retreats. And that um, page actually organises reading retreats. This is only the second one that she's done. She did the first one in October. This is the second one. Uh, this one is sold out but there will be another one in October. So if you're interested go and have a look at her, um, her page and see what you think. I'm really excited but it's a good five, five and a half hour journey from my home to where we're going to be staying. So I'm going to need an audio book uh, to keep me going and what I thought I would do is listen to A Clash of Kings. Um, that's a 30 hour audiobook so I should be able to get a good third of the way into it on the drive there and the drive back even if I don't listen to anything else while I'm there. At least I can make a dent in that one. I thought if I listen to it on one and a half times speed I can play it through the speaker in my car um, and because it, I will be concentrating on the driving, it might just be background noise, but I might just get further into it than I have done. I might get past the fact that there's lots of new characters that to get used to, um, and I, hopefully I should make a, a good dent in it. I have a reserve book, just in case that things are feeling a little slumpy for me, then I am going to pick up Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the final book in the Harry Potter series. Uh, I'm hoping to try and finish this this month um, but again I'll see how I'm going like I say I've got 11 or 12 books on my uh, on my TBR this month uh, not including this one 
so it is pretty ambitious of me if as long as i finish the four books that i've got for romanceopoly and the immortal in death and my two uh, library books then i'll be more than happy but i'm going to keep harry potter on the back burner because i know that if if i'm having any issues this is one that was going to actually pick me up um, and stop me from feeling slumpy and get me back into reading again so that's my rather ambitious tbr for the month like I say, I am going on this reading retreat, um, so I'm hoping maybe to read the romance novels and maybe the um, In Death book while I'm there, because they're quite quick and easy reads. The itinerary for the weekend is such that there's lots of reading time over the course of the Friday evening, all day Saturday, for a short while on Sunday morning, and um, we do have to check out by 11 o'clock. But again, it won't end for me because I'll be listening to my audiobook in the car anyway. So it's quite ambitious this month. Uh, I'll see how I get on and I will check in at the end of the month for you. I hope you all have a good reading month and I will speak to you all soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.